Melnick, if you want to come on up, um, and I understand that you want to make a proffer um, of what occurred, I guess, on June 6th and June 7th. Um, let me just say that, you know, I think it goes without saying that people can perceive the same thing in different ways, depending upon the perspective they're standing at at the time. Um, and I am going to permit you to make a brief proffer of um, what you believe happened. I do not think, based on what I have reviewed, uh, that you were laboring under any conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. I don't even know that at this point in time <clears throat> any of that is particularly relevant, but I can understand you wanting to put something on the record. I would like for you to... Um, stick to the facts to the extent you can I keep just, emotion out of it um, and go ahead. So judge, basically what it comes down to is after receiving the transcripts from the two ex parte hearings that took place or ex parte meetings that took place between uh, Judge Glanville and the district attorney's office and then with Ms. Bumpus and uh, Mr. Copeland in tow, the allegation has been made that I was somehow acting um, in conjunction with Mr. Steele and Mr. Shart um, and other members of the defense team in this case, which is categorically untrue. Um, I am unfortunately in a difficult position as it relates to this issue because what I would need to produce from a documentary standpoint to um, rebut these allegations are privileged communications between myself and Mr. Copeland. Um, but my presence, my, so starting with June the 6th, um, I sent an email to Miss Hilton, Miss Love, Mr. Steele, and Mr. Shart stating that uh, Mr. Copeland wanted to take the fifth, did not wish to testify. Um, on the 7th, I was shown an order that was signed on June the 7th stating that Mr. Copeland was being given transactional immunity. At no point, and I think the, what really bothers me is that at no point did anybody from the DA's office before that time, uh, within any relevant time frame, reach out to me and just ask me if I was representing Kenneth Copeland for purposes of his testifying in this trial. Everybody, everybody in this room that has been involved in this case from the beginning has known that I was representing Kenneth Copeland. All right, and I know, I know because you had a case before me with Mr. Copeland. Um, with Mr. Copeland that resolved in June of 2023. That's so correct. I know that as of that point, you were rec rec representing him. Yes. Um, and then following the resolution of that case, he did not have any more pending charges. He correct? did not. That's okay. correct. Yeah. All right. So that was a year ago. So at a minimum. I feel it was incumbent on the district attorney's office to reach out to me just to ask that question. Um, now, as far as what communications took place between the DA's office and Mr. Copeland, I don't know exactly. Um, but I do know that on June the 6th, he and I spoke and he told me that he wished to assert his Fifth Amendment privilege. Um, and so I sent that email. The um, uh, transactional immunity order was granted on June the 7th, which I find the timing there to be let's just say ironic, in that apparently they were going to have Mr. Copeland testify without any grant of immunity um, because it was the state's intended purpose to call him as a witness on June the 7th. Um, and so I was here on June the 7th. I told the court uh, of what uh, Mr. Copeland's intentions were. There was a lot of back and forth. Obviously, Mr. Copeland was taken into custody on June the 7th, and then everything that happened on June the 10th, I don't have to go over all yeah, that. Yeah, I've read all yeah, of that. Yes. Yeah. So my purpose here today is to state on the record that absolutely, no, excuse me, nothing that I said or did on Mr. Copeland's behalf was done in any conjunction or with any consultation in cahoots or anything along those lines with Mr. Steele or Mr. Shart or anybody else uh, in the defense team. All right. I, I was here um, doing what my client had expressed to me what he wanted to do. And as I said, if it becomes a major issue, I I have more than enough documentation to prove that. Okay, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. It's not an issue at all to this court. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, that's it? That's it? All right. Okay, Mr. Steele, um, 
You had said to us on Friday afternoon that you had a good faith basis for believing that there may have been a conversation you believe during the June 10th ex parte in chambers meeting at some point when Judge Glanville was not in the room, but between Ms. Bumpus, who was acting as counsel for the day for uh, Mr. Copeland, Mr. Copeland and uh, Prosecutor Hilton. So can you give me what your basis is for that? Otherwise, we might just move on. All right. Oh, well, he, I think, may have already walked out. I didn't realize that. I thought this was kind of to put, let him have a chance to clear the record. What are your questions going to be? Um, just about the representations made, about an email with a BCC, and it was sent inadvertently. Um, I believe that he'll say that that's not accurate. And then we sent your honorable court on Friday all of the emails. If you put them in order. Yeah. I, not okay. I mean, I've seen it. I think that's fine if you want to ask him that and clarify it. I don't think that um, Ms. Love made a representation that that is, in fact, what happened. That was her theory because she couldn't figure out why Mr. Melnick was referring to her in the third person. Um, but sure, you can ask him that. I just ask you a couple more questions. Sure. And Your Honor, I'll move um, the Don't admission you. of all those emails, and I have copies for them if that makes it easier and we can mark them as an exhibit if that's what you want. They were already sent to Your Honorable Court. Um, if you've got them now and can make them an exhibit, and I have, I'm not sure exactly what courts, if you would make them a, sure. a defense exhibit. Can I just step back for a second? Sure. And Your Honor, would the court be um, admitting those exhibits for any purpose as it relates to this trial? No, not for the trial, just for whatever these ancillary proceedings are. I'm not sure what to call them, but motions. <laughs> so it'll be... I guess an exhibit to, we can call this a motions hearing. The, it's today, August 5th, 2024. Proffer by Mr. Melnick. So Mr. Melnick, have you looked at and reviewed all of the emails that you have given and the state has given on do this you, topic. Not, do you want me to be sworn? Do I need to be sworn for this? I don't believe I've been sworn. Not, not, not for me. You're an officer of the court. Yes, I have. Hang on. Yes, Ms. Love. You responded to what I was asking. I okay. I have. I have reviewed the emails. I have to mark these. Uh huh. Give this to the state. Yep. You give that to the yep. state. I'm just putting them in sure. date and time order. Yep, I've reviewed them.
things over there. Go forward to two. Right. Seven to eleven fifty six. Yeah, we have that. No, we'll go through once the judge is ready. I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, I thought, I thought you were not ready. All right, um, and thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Melnick, thank you for your time. Sure. Um, what you said to this honorable court is that you represented Mr. Copeland in an unrelated case. Is that true? That's correct. Yes. All right. Was there any discussion with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office members that you represented Mr. Copeland for purposes of being a witness in this trial that's before the Honorable Judge Whitaker. Yes. Can you explain that to us? It goes back to 2021. Um, I met with uh, Don Geary, um, who at the time was, I guess, in charge of the uh, state's uh, handling of this case. Um, and he talked to me extensively about Mr. Copeland, Mr. Copeland's involvement with YSL, and uh, the fact that the state wished to use him as a witness in this case. And. Um, did you make it clear from your viewpoint that you were representing Mr. Copeland in this case, meaning the case that's on trial before Judge Whitaker? Yes. As a witness or as a potential co-defendant? Yes. Okay. And that um, the Honorable Court knows, I believe, but to your knowledge, who is, or who is Don Geary in 2021? He was, he, what he introduced himself, I mean, I knew Don for a long time. But what he said, he was special counsel for the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. He was basically hired almost like in an of counsel uh, uh, position, as I understand it. And was he affiliated on working this case that's before Judge Whitaker yes. on trial? We talked about this case specifically. At any and, time, well, I'm sorry. And nothing else. At any time, did you um, or any member of the District Attorney's Office um, in your presence ever say that you were not representing Mr. Copeland pursuant to a potential witness in this trial? No. Okay. Did you ever have conversations with uh, Ms. Love, who is seated to your left? Yes. About representing Mr. Copeland as a witness in this trial? Yes. And when were those conversations? March of 2023. And was it clear from your standpoint, from your you know, viewpoint, as the court said, people can observe things differently, but from your standpoint, was it clear that you made it known to the Fulton County District Attorney's Office that you were representing Mr. Copeland as a witness or a potential witness in this trial? Yes, it was. All right. Did you do anything to um, separate yourself from that representation? No. All right. The Honorable Court stated a little while ago, and, and you, you left here so quickly, but um, <laughs> that you, um, your representation ended of Mr. Copeland, I heard, in 2023 when you entered some sort of um, disposition. I don't remember what it was before this Honorable Court. And when I say this Honorable Court, I'm talking about Judge Whitaker. Sure. That's correct. Did your representation end of Mr. Copeland as a witness in this case? Did no. Did you ever make that known to anybody? No, I never did. Did you actually do the opposite? Uh, I was contacted by another member of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office in June of 2023. And about, about Yes, what? I'm sorry, about representing Mr. Copeland in this, as a witness in this case. Were there any agreements between Mr. Copeland and yourself in the District Attorney's Office? Um, because you obviously got him not to be charged, or I, that's a bad way of saying it, but you obviously did some, or someone did something that he's not charged in this case. I, I would honestly say that that may not have been due to anything that I did or said necessarily. That, I think, was an internal decision from the DA's office. Okay. All right. Now, I'd like to show you what I marked, and I just want this for the record, and I marked it number one, Mr. Williams, and can you announce it just so um, the court, and we're going to give all this to the court what this is, if you recognize it, sure. and then go to number two, three. But for people looking on, um, just announce it by the title, if you don't mind. If you don't recognize it, please yeah. say that as well. No, I recognize this. This is an email I sent to Ms. Love, uh, Ms. Hilton uh, from the DA's office, um, yourself and Mr. Shart, dated June the 6th, 2024, at 4.31 p.m. 
Do you want me to read it or? Sure. Uh, says, good afternoon. All it has come to my attention that the Fulton County District Attorney's Office has questioned my client, Kenneth Copeland, without my knowledge or consent. Please be advised that my client does not wish to speak with any member of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, nor any law enforcement officer at this, from this point forward. My client will assert his privilege under the first, under the- uh, Wait, that's uh, way too fast, fast for the I'm court sorry. reporter to take down. You, you're with me, law enforcement, um, uh, nor any law enforcement officer from this point forward. My client will assert his privilege under the fifth, my, his privilege under the Fifth Amendment tomorrow and will not testify. Thank you, John Melnick. Okay, on the sixth, and, and you made it clear. With, to your knowledge, was there any type of immunity agreement uh, whatsoever in place? Use immunity, transactional immunity, any type of agreement? There was no response from the district attorney's office to this email to me, um, so I was not aware of any um, immunity, any offer of immunity to Mr. Copeland at that time. Did you know, personally know, that if Mr. Copeland testified at this trial without some sort of protection, by protection I mean whatever type of immunity, that he could be making statements that it would incriminate himself? Yes. No statute of limitations ran, he could be charged? I, so I, I can't say that with absolute. Okay, well, we're dealing with a bunch of lawyers, so I think Mr. Melnick can handle it. I'm going to overrule that. I, I can't say with absolute certainty that I investigated it to the point where I would know whether the statute of limitations would have run or not. About federal crimes for gun offenses? No. Uh, as far as I know, again, I, I didn't do extensive research into it, but it's my understanding that it would not have run uh, in terms of the federal statute. And uh, Mr. Copeland, of course, has been charged previously and, and convicted in, in U.S. District Court. So the feds, once the feds have their eyes on you, they have their eyes on you. Uh, and how bad is the co-defendant, in this case, being indicted later? And is that application barred to that? I, so, I, I don't know. Okay. Without, I don't know with absolute certainty. Okay. Were you concerned that if he testified, when you wrote this email, that when you just announced that Mr. Williams, number one, that he could be facing criminal liability? I absolutely was. All right. Is that the reason you wrote that email? Um, um, among other things, but that is one reason why I wrote the email. Was there anything um, in your mind at the time of sending it that was um, um, suspicious or uh, clandestine or um, by CC and the Honorable Maxwell Shard or myself on that email? Not at all. I thought everybody had a right to know. Okay. And everybody being? Everybody from the prosecution and the defense team. Okay. All right. Um, Your Honor, move for the admission of Mr. Williams, number one for purpose of this hearing. It's admitted. Your Honor, can I just get clarification as to which of the emails we don't have a number is uh, Defendant Williams number one? Can you yeah. clarify? June 6, 2024, 4.31 p.m. to yourself, Ms. Hilton, Mr. Steele, Mr. Sharp. Okay. Does it have the response at 4.57.05 for Ms. Hilton or is it the one without response? I don't remember seeing a response. Okay. So is, I mean, is there a response on there There's on, on Williams 1? There will be, Your Honor. Okay, not so that Williams has one. been, for purposes of the record, the one that does not have the response on it. Okay, okay so here's the response. But, but well, Is it a part of Williams 1? No, it's not. Okay, so I assume Mr. Steele might ask you about the next one. Go ahead. And that is, um, I'd like to show you what's in front of you, Mr. Williams, num exhibit number two for purposes of today's hearing, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Tell us, take your time to look at it, tell us if you identify, if you can identify it, if it's true and accurate for what it appears to be. I hope all of this is from Miss, I think exclusively from Miss Hilton to me. Um, but do you recognize it? I do, I recognize it. Is that it. accurate? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I move for purposes of this hearing, Mr. Williams, number two, after you identify it so everyone knows what you're looking for. June 6, 2024, 4.57 p.m., I hope good as addressed to me. Good afternoon. I hope all is well. In our conversations with Mr. Copeland, he advised that you were not his attorney and he had not spoken with you. However, if you are, however, if you are asserting that you are his attorney, we will cease communication, but your client is under subpoena and is expected to be here at 8.30 a.m. It is our understanding that your client does not have transportation, so we're planning to pick him up, so please make sure that he is present so we do not have to take any further action if he fails to appear for his subpoena, thank you and have a great evening. And then it's from Ms. Hilton. And um, did you respond to that email? And if yes, is it on Mr. Williams number two and what does it say in time and date? If you don't I, it is, I did respond. Um, it's dated June 6th 
5.47 p.m., again, with CCs to everybody in the case. Um, uh, I've been, I have been Mr. Copeland's attorney. He tells me that he repeatedly told you that you were, uh, told you that when you were questioning him. I also spoke with Don Geary extensively about Mr. Copeland when he was assigned to this case, and I spoke with Ms. Love Slow early. Down. Slow down. Um, I spoke with Ms. Love early in the process around the time jury selection was beginning. I have a plea with Judge Carnicell tomorrow at 9 o'clock, and I will come to the courtroom as soon as I am done. Is everything that you responded about being Mr. Copeland's lawyer for purposes of this case true? Yes. Okay. And uh, the court already admitted number two. If you could go to number well, three. Well, no, I haven't. Oh, I'm sorry. I move for the admission of Mr. Williams, number two. It's admitted. And that one contains both Ms. Hilton's response and then Mr. Melnick's response back that he just read. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. That's admitted. Okay. This is a repeat some withdrawing. Yep. Okay. Okay, if we go to Mr. Williams, number three, can you take a look at this and tell us whether you recognize it? And if yes, what is it? And it's a... Your Honor, if you could just have what that is, and you don't have numbers on it, if I could just have in the court what it is that you're even tendering. I don't, know. I'm, I don't know how many things you got handed, but Mr. Melnick's about to describe it. It's dated June 7th, 2024, 1152 a.m. It's from me to Miss Hilton and Miss Love. Um, it's a, and a, a, the first sentence says, here is a communication between myself and Miss Love, which pertains directly to the YSL case. And it's a forwarded message uh, from uh, a number of people, including myself and your case manager, Sheila Rosser, dated March the 3rd of um, 2023. Um, and it's from Ms. Love uh, stating, uh, good morning, Ms. Rosser. The state asks that the defendant be required to sign the conditions in front of a notary or a sheriff's official so that we can enforce the conditions upon his release since he was not apprised by the court in person. And I'm sorry, that is in reference to um, two bond orders, I believe, that I had prepared and presented to the court in reference to Mr. Copeland's case that was pending before you um, in 2023, uh, that is an email dated uh, Thursday, March 2nd, 2023 at 4.42 p.m. Um, and this is just a, a chain of emails related to the bond order for Mr. Copeland's case um, in 2023. All right. And you're forwarding that in June of 2024 to say, see, you knew at some point I yes. was representing him. Okay. That's correct, Judge. Three, a three-page document or just the one portion of the chain that you just read? Um, so is this, this is a continuation yes. of Okay. There's more to it, Ms. Love. Is it a three-page document? It appears to be. A, it, I think it appears to be a three-page document. Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Do, do you need me to, I don't need to read all of this. No, I don't think so. We move for the admission of Mr. Williams number three for purposes of today's hearing. That's admitted. The, why did you, Mr. Malik, why did you send this? to the district attorney's um, office on June 7, 2024, 11.52 a.m.? Because of what they claim to be the confusion as to whether or not I was representing Mr. Copeland for purposes of his being a witness in this case. Okay. I think these emails demonstrate that I did, in fact, represent him and that they knew I represented him. And were there conversations that you represented Mr. Copeland for the witness in the YSL case during that time? Yes, there were. And who did you speak with? Miss Love. Okay. And you're responding to Mr. Williams number two that's already in evidence? Yes. All right. Your Honor, I move for the admission of Mr. Williams number three. It is a three-page document. It's admitted. And I'm going to mark this as Mr. Williams number four. Can you take a look at this and tell us if you recognize this? I do. What is it? And what is that? It's an email that I also sent on June the 7th, uh, 2024, at 11.54 a.m. Um, to Miss Hilton and Miss Love, um, referencing another communication I had from the district attorney's office. Um, it was a forwarded message from uh, Peachtree Offices, which is um, uh, an executive office um, uh, company that, that answers my phone for me. Um, where I got a message from Peter Herzog asking me to contact him 
in reference to Kenneth Copeland. So it's a forwarded message from June the 27th of 2023 uh, that I then forwarded to Ms. Hilton and Ms. Love, demonstrating that they should have just communicated with me um, about Copeland before questioning him. And, and go ahead. I'm sorry. And before we got into all this. And who is um, Peter? And I'm going to spell the last name, okay? H-E-R-E-Z-O-G. Yeah. -E -E who is that person, to your knowledge? I, I believe his last name is misspelled there. I think it's H-E-R-Z-O-G. But Peter Herzog is an um, assistant DA in the Fulton DA's office. And Mr. Williams, which marked as number four, is sent for that um, message on June 27, 2023, uh, about three months after the March 1, 2023 Yes. Correspondence with uh, Ms. Love about Mr. Hill, uh, Copeland. That's correct. Now, if your representation of Mr. Copeland had, in fact, ended when you disposed of the case before the Honorable Judge Whitaker by that time, do you remember? Did it Did it end? So my case with Judge Whitaker, is that yes. what you're asking me about? Yes. Yeah, I, I believe it had, but honestly, I, I haven't gone back to it, check it. If y'all have the case number, I can look it up and let you know the disposition date. I don't have it. Happy to do that. Nobody has it. Um, it, may be it was a 22 SC case, but that's all I know. It's fine. I can probably pull it up some other way. Y'all go ahead. Okay. Um, and you forward this, you said why? This to, message. To reiterate the fact that the DA's the Fulton DA's office should have known, knew and should have known that I was representing Mr. Copeland for purposes of his testimony in the YSL trial. Mr. Herzog was never involved in the case before Judge Whitaker. I, I'd never spoken with him about anything related to the case in front of Judge Whitaker. Uh, the only attorneys that I ever spoke with about the actual disposition of the case with Judge Whitaker was Abigail Potter, um, Abby Potter from the DA's office, um, and Mr. Abadi. And the only reason Mr. Abadi was involved with it, that's Adam Abadi from the Fulton DA's office, was because he was concerned about Mr. Copeland's testimony in the YSL trial. And obviously, Miss Love, because she missed the bond order. Yes, right. And Same reason. The bond order. That's correct. Okay. Now, um, I'd like to show you Mr. Williams number five. Oh, can Your Honor, I, I move I... for the admission of Mr. Williams number four. Uh, it's admitted, and uh, for purposes of the record, the case before me, where Mr. Melnick represented Mr. Copeland, is twenty-two SC. 182134, and the final disposition was actually on June 29th of 2023. It's a one page document. Okay. okay, I'm showing you Mr. Williams number five. Tell us if you um, remember that. Look at it. I do. Okay, and is it accurate? It is. Can you describe, uh, like you've been doing, the date and time? what it is, what it purports to be. It's dated June the 7th of 2024. It's to Miss Love and Miss Hilton from me. Um, and it is in response to an email that I received. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. You can look at the documents multiple. Things. Yeah, okay. Uh, so this is a part of the same chain of documents where I was referencing the fact that um, Miss Love uh, Miss Love certainly knew that I was representing um, Mr. Copeland. Um, she and I talked extensively about Mr. Copeland, um, and she had told me that she wished to use Mr. Copeland as a witness in this case. Obviously, by the time we were having these communications in March of 2023, uh, the case had long since been indicted, um, and Mr. Copeland was not charged as a party um, on the indictment of this case. Um, so... The, this is a continuation of the same emails going back to March 2nd and March 3rd of 2023, where we're referencing the bond orders. These emails actually go back to March the 1st of 2023, um, where Miss Love is um, discussing whether or not Mr. Copeland should be subject to a curfew as part of his bond order. Um, there are I seem to remember other communications um, in which Ms. Love references the fact that she's concerned about Mr. Copeland's safety uh, and, uh, and the like. Um, and then so the last part of this email, which is at the top of the first page, um, is where Ms. Love questions whether my concern is for uh, Mr. Copeland or Mr. Steele and Mr. Shart's client. 
neither of whom I've ever met or have any uh, relationship with whatsoever. Um, and then I responded to that. Did, did I ever do anything um, untoward to affect your representation of your client, Mr. Copeland? Absolutely not. Did Mr. Shard do anything? No. Did anybody um, come to you, at you, about your representation, Mr. Copeland, in this case? What Mr. Copeland did on June 7th of 2024, where he asserted his Fifth Amendment privilege, was entirely his decision. I was there just as his mouthpiece, as a lawyer, as his advocate for purposes of him asserting that his Fifth Amendment privilege. I had, other than that, I have absolutely no agenda in this case whatsoever. When um, Ms. Love wrote on, on a uh, motion, ex parte motion for the former judge, the recused Judge Glanville, mm -hmm. yeah, to I grant your client the, uh, introduction through this witness or the posing to this witness of any question about a motion that I wrote, given that the witness cannot testify confidently about anything that I specifically wrote or what I. Think. All right. Well, I don't know yet what the end of the question is going to be. So I'll hold your objection until I hear the question. Yes. And it's in the record. Already, Your Honor, I could get another copy, though. Um, Ms. Love wrote in that motion seeking use immunity mm -hmm. under 25-5-507 mm -hmm. for Mr. Copeland. Yes. That Mr. Copeland on Thursday, June 6, 2024, had some sort of interaction or dealings with members of the defense team. To your knowledge, is that true? I have no knowledge of that. All right. Um, do you want to admit or did you want to tender for admission Williams 5? I do. Yes. All right. That's admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. And Williams 5 is what? Okay, Mr. Mel Melnick, I don't have any other Hang on. Questions what are you asking? Hang on. Hang on, Mr. Steele. What are you asking? Just what it is? Which one is it? Yes. It's the last the one they discussed page. that I don't know how many pages it is. I don't have any of it in front of me, but it's the last one they discussed that has um, the email from you asking who Mr. Melnick is most concerned about or something like that. And then Mr. Melnick's um, rather peppery response back. Okay. So it's just... Could the court ask the for clarification? Just one page or four? I don't know. Four pages. Four pages. Mr. Melnick, were there any BCC? Do you know what a BCC is? Yes. Okay. I apologize for asking. Yeah. Any... <laughs> we're all old enough to know that that Correct. means blind carbon copy. A whole lot of people don't know that anymore since we don't use carbon copies. But that's where somebody can see it, but the, P the recipients who are CC don't know. Yes. I did not blind mm -hmm. copy anybody on that last email. I just sent it to Ms. Hilda Ms. Love. Any I told Ms. Love. I apologize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any allegation that um, there was some sort of teamwork or conspiracy um, against the state of Georgia and against your client, Mr. Copeland, is that true at all? It is categorically untrue. All right. I want to thank you so much. I don't have any other questions. Ms. Love, do you have questions of Mr. Melnick? Hang on just a second. Just briefly. Okay, hang on. You have questions too? All right, I'll let Mr. Sharp go. And those are the court's copies. Okay. Mr. Melnick, if you're more comfortable taking the witness stand, that's fine, but okay. Mr. Melnick, good morning. Good morning. You are... As part of your representation of Mr. Copeland, as part of your representation of Mr. Copeland, yes, sir. Did you did you also make it known? Uh, did you make your representation known to the defense counsel in this case, specifically myself and Mr. Steele? I did. Yeah. Okay. In. Your dealings with the defense in this case, um, 
have they, have myself or Mr. Steele ever gone behind your representation to your knowledge and attempted to speak to Mr. Copeland without your knowledge and understanding? I have no knowledge of that. I'm not aware of any time that would have happened. Since you were alerted about the state speaking to Mr. Copeland, um, have you read the transcripts from the ex parte communications? I have mostly read them. I'll be honest and say I haven't read the whole thing. Okay. Um, have you become aware that Mr. Copeland was speaking to the state in the week leading up to June 7th, 2024? Yes. Okay. Are, have you become aware that Mr. Copeland was in the actual courthouse speaking to the state on that week? I became aware of that on either June 6th or June 7th. Did you know anything about that as it was happening? I did not. Before you reached out to the state via those emails that have been introduced, did the state ever tell you that they were communicating with your client? No. How did you initially learn that the state was communicating with your client? Are you referencing the week of week leading up to June the 7th of 2024? Yes, let me, let me uh, ask uh, in a more precise manner. Mm -hmm. Did you become aware on Thursday, June 6, 2024, that the state had been speaking to your client that week? Yes. And did you become aware that the state intended to call your client to the stand on the next day, that Friday? Yes. Okay. Did you, um, and how did you find out about the state's plans to call your witness to the stand? I believe you called me. C could you say it again? You called me. You being yes. Max Sharp? Yes. Okay. And um, I called you on the telephone? Yes. Okay. In that conversation, did I ever ask you to do anything on behalf of myself or Mr. Steele or our clients? Absolutely not. Did I ever ask you to stop Mr. Copeland from testifying? Absolutely not. As a lawyer, is it appropriate to contact another lawyer about their client? Objection, Your Honor, as to this witness being qualified to speak about what are in the ethics. I would hope that every lawyer in the state of Georgia is qualified to speak on what we're expected to do under our code of ethics. I'm going to overrule that. Would you repeat the question, please? In your, in your experience as a lawyer, is it appropriate for another lawyer to contact you about matters concerning your client? That's law school 101. And is that what I did on Thursday, June 6, 2024? Yes. Mr. Melnick, before you got in, well, your testimony is you were involved representing Mr. Copeland yes. throughout this entire period, correct? Mm -hmm. Before you emailed the district attorney's office about their communications with your client that you were unaware of, to your knowledge, had Mr. Copeland been granted any sort of immunity or legal protections for his testimony? To my knowledge, no. Okay. After you contacted this district attorney's office and, and actively communicated with them about your client, what protections was Mr. Copeland granted? Use immunity. I have nothing further. Thank All you. All right. Any other defense attorney with questions for Mr. Milnick? Not for All right. Hearing no other. Go ahead, Ms. Love. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Melnick, I'm just going to be a little bit brief and I'm going to clarify some things. Is Defendant Williams' exhibit... <laughs> yes, Mr. Hart. Or speak just more loudly. Okay. Yeah. Or come around and... Yeah. You know what? I'll take okay. the stand. Okay. okay. I just can't get these to You can leave them there. Okay. okay. Does That's somebody fine. have a copy of those exhibits for the court? Judge, I'll give to the court the ones that he has admitted, and I'll just go ahead and use the ones that I have copies. Okay. Thank you.
just pull that mic down towards you and make sure the green is on. Mr. Malmick, there oh. should be some button somewhere. That you see where it is? I don't actually see it. I, it sounds to me like it's on. Yeah, it sounds like it's on. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Ms. Love. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Melnick, and Your Honor, I'm going to use, unless the court instructs me otherwise, I'm going to use the copies that I was given that I've, I've marked as defendants the way that they've indicated they should be marked exhibits. Okay. Okay. Mr. Melnick, I'm showing you what is the copy of Defendant's Exhibit 1. Yes. That was given to the state and to the court. Is is this an exact copy of Defendant's Exhibit One that I'm showing you? I believe so. I mean, I haven't printed them up. I don't know if there was another email that was. Y'all are welcome to just use these if you want. That doesn't need to be an issue. I mean, they were handed to you, Miss Love, by Mr. Steele, right? Yes, Your Honor. All right, then they ought to be exact copies. May I uh, refer to them? Just a second, Mr. Harvey. Yes, can you not hear? Oh, me? Okay, sorry. I was just saying, I'm sure that the copies are the same, unless, but if she wants to use the admitted copies, she can. I'll trade you. How about that? Yes. Just make sure you get the admitted copies to the court reporter when we're finished with this. Yes. Thank you. So showing you what has been admitted as Defendant Williams Exhibit Number One. Yes. Looking at Defendant Williams Exhibit Number One, is that a an extraction? In other words, is that a portion of an email cut out and isolated from a larger email. I don't believe so. Okay. Then I'm going to show you defendant Your Honor, I just may need the portions that I gave to the court because I don't see. All right, here you go. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Showing you. What I will mark as uh, state's exhibit one copy of defendant Williams exhibit one Melman proffer. And I was provided this by um, Mr. Williams, John. By Mr. Steele. Yes. Uh, could you look at what I've now labeled as State's Exhibit 1 and compare it to what has been admitted as Defendant's Exhibit 1 and tell me whether or not those two documents, State's Exhibit 1, just for the purposes of the record, is a one-page document. Could you tell me whether these two documents contain the content from the same email. So the, the content appears to be the same other than the fact that on the one that you just marked there, what appears to be the seal from the Fulton County, um, the Atlanta Judicial Circuit. And in fact, the one that I've marked as State's Exhibit 1 is the actual email that Mr. Steele would have had access to, correct? It's the it's a portion of the actual email chain, given that it has that seal on it. Very often, if I'm sending an email, I'll just pick up from the last email that I sent to or from that individual. So that may well be. There may have been a, a prior email, um, but I don't, I mean, if it was between you and I, I don't remember exactly when it was. I'm showing you what 
has, I believe, been marked Sorry. as defendant's exhibit number, defendant Williams exhibit number two. Let's see if those two match. Give me one second, okay? Defendant Williams exhibit two. Mm -hmm. So you'd agree with me that so defendant Williams exhibit two is in fact the top portion of the email that I have labeled and tendered as state's exhibit or not yet tendered, but labeled as state's exhibit one. Yes, that's correct. Your honor, the state tender state's exhibit one, just as evidence. All right. All right. Now admitted. Thank you. Jeff. So looking at defendant Williams exhibit two and state's exhibit one, are you able now to say with any more clarity that defendant Williams exhibit one is a document, a piece of paper where a portion of the email chain that is contained within defendant Williams two and state's exhibit one has been extracted and pasted onto a piece of paper. So I can't speak for how Mr. Steele printed this up. I wasn't there in his office when he did that or whenever somebody in his office did that. You are correct that state what you, what has been marked here as Mr. Williams exhibit number two is part of a chain of communications between myself, uh, yourself, Ms. Hilton, uh, Mr. Steele, and uh, Mr. Shart. Looks like there's a CC to Antonio Long uh, as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this is a, this is a, but these emails were sent after the state's exhibit one, which is also Mr. Williams exhibit number one. These, these, so, e these emails date, so you can see here, Miss Love, this is dated June 6, 2024, 547 PM. Yeah, this is dated June 6, 2024, 431 PM. Right. So this is, this is just part of the same line of communications that we were having where I said, Mr. Copeland doesn't want to plead, doesn't want to testify, wants to take the fifth. Ms. Hilton responds, and then I respond to her response. And in her response, this is where you get your insignia for the uh, Atlanta Judicial Circuit. Okay, so let me be clearer. The exhibit that is labeled Defendant Williams Exhibit 1, uh -huh. did you ever forward that separately to... Mr. Steele or Mr. Sharp? I think I just forwarded. I mean, I wouldn't have had to because they got the emails. Right. Okay. So they got this email initially. Right. Y'all, when y'all are saying this email, we okay. have no idea I got what you. you mean. Can you refer to the exhibit numbers? They got Mr. Williams email number one, exhibit number one, which is the first email from June 6th at roughly 4.30 p.m. Um, then there was a response from Ms. Hilton, June 6th, 4.57 PM. And that's marked Williams 2. Williams 2, thank you. And then there, I respond to that June 6, uh, 547 PM. Okay, so And that, that's also on Williams on 2, two right? yes. Yeah, okay. So as it pertains to my original question, Defendant Williams Exhibit 1 was never a communication that you sent separate from the emails that are contained in Defendant Williams 2 and State's Exhibit 1. Is that wrong or right? That is wrong. Okay. So you sent, without forwarding the rest of what is labeled as Defendant Williams 2 and State's Exhibit 1, you sent an email that contained only the document that is labeled Defendant's Exhibit 1 to... Mr. Sharp, Mr. Steele, Ms. Hilton, and myself. I sent it on June the 6th at 4.30. Right. And do you also see June 6th at 4.30, 1 p.m. And when you say 4.30, you do mean 4.30, 1 p.m.? Yes. Do you also see June 6th, 2024 at 4.30, 1 p.m. on the email States Exhibit 1? Yes. And in fact, the email states exhibit one is at the bottom, meaning it came before yes. the emails that were defendant Williams exhibit two. That is correct. Okay. And so is given that states exhibit one looks as it does, mm -hmm. are you saying that the email that is defendant Williams one 
is the entirety and not a part of any other email chain that this, you sent. This email was the first email sent. Okay, so when I say this email, I'm referring to Mr. Williams exhibit number one. Okay. Was the first email sent on June the 6th of 2024. Okay. That is the first email. Mr. Williams exhibit number two is the continuation of that chain of emails in which Ms. Hilton responded to me and then I responded in to everybody else, okay. to, uh, including yourself. Thank you for clearing that up. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, I'm going to give back to the court, the court's copies of the emails. Okay. Thank you.